Hi folks, it's good to be with you. Love to everybody out there. God bless you. I'm doing this just to give me peace of mind. Um, just relaxes my mind. Uh, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, I'm doing the we're doing the Heidelberg Catechism, which is a, a very good catechism uh, to encourage us in the Word of God. It's a it's a very good uh, doctrinal statement. It's very helpful. Uh, and it's a real blessing. Um, yeah, so I just want to share a few things. Um, today, I rested all day today. I think I was having a bit of a breakdown yesterday. Uh, I can even feel pain at the back of my head, back of my neck. So I've needed to just, just chill out, relax. Uh, so I relaxed today, just did some reading. Um, a bit of praying and stuff and I just had to chill out and, and relax I've ever I've been able to book a flight uh, someone donated the money for a flight um, so I've, I've booked a one-way uh, mid-September it it was the cheapest I could get um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get a flight back uh, the end of September, October, it'll be a lot cheaper then. So, but I've got a flight in mid September that somebody helped me uh, with the finances for that. So I appreciate that, uh, and it it's quite providential. I, I go, <clears throat> I arrive on my mum's birthday. <laughs> I didn't plan it that way, but uh, it just works out that way. Um, like I said, we have funds. Someone donated for a car. So there's a, a bit of money to save to help buy a car. We still need to raise a lot more funds for a car. So we can't touch the, that funds. We Someone's donated for Bible, so we can't touch that fund. Um, and Patreon um, are still playing up. Uh, they said they've sorted the problem out. They haven't. We've not been able to receive funds from Patreon. Um uh family members of a uh, family member has sent us a bit of money so we can go keep going for the next week but if anybody wants to support the ministry so that we have things to live on and, and do the work um that um the best way to support us is at the moment is by paypal or give send go give send go are very good they give it pretty quickly uh the page of gifts and go is on the community uh, on the about page of youtube so if you want to give patreon uh, paypal or gifts and go to keep us going through through the the, the coming days um but yeah i think i was having a bit of a breakdown yesterday so um so today i've just I've just switched off from everything. Uh, things were just getting on top of me, I think. Uh, and me and Dorcas are fine. She understood. Although it's not an excuse for, for getting angry and things like that. So, so I thought we'd do. Uh, so this afternoon, I was I was just wanting to relax and uh, on my iPad, uh, I had uh, a book of the Heidelberg Catechism and I just read a chapter and it just blessed me, it just really encouraged me. So I thought we'd go through some of it today and I just thought it might edify you, it might encourage you and it might bless you. There's so much going on today that's crazy. Uh, we, we just need to be in, in good things that, that build us up. So. So again, if you want to support us, go to Give, Send, Go. You can go on the About page or PayPal. Pray that Patreon gets the right sorted because we have we have about uh, over a thousand dollars in Patreon that we can't access at the moment. If we could access that, we could do a lot of things, but we can't access it at the moment. So it's put it's put a lot of strain on the ministry on the house. Um. But we're okay. We we have something to 
to, to, to get on with ministry for the next few days. Um, I'll probably get some Bibles this week because some money was donated for that. So we'll get some Bibles this week. Um, and also, um, we'll probably help a prison. The prisoners are starving, apparently. They're, they're not getting fed. So we're going to help the chaplain and buy some Gary. It's like it's like a powder. It's like I don't know. It's like a porridgey type thing, and they just mix it with water and sugar. So we're going to get some some of that for the uh, prisoners this week. It doesn't cost a lot, and uh, you can get a lot of it, so it'll help them. So those are some of the things that we'll do this week. But. Uh, Thanks, John. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, mate. <laughs> I'm nearly crying, mate. I'm nearly crying, mate. <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. I don't know what's wrong with me, mate. I, I think uh, you don't realise how much you love people, you know. And it's not only that, like, you know, with my mum and that, uh, it's the strain of ministry as well. I mean, there's a lot of pain that's been going on in the ministry here. We've helped people. We've helped some, some young people. We've given our lifeblood to some young people. And it breaks my heart that they don't receive it. They don't appreciate it. You know, we, I've given my life shirt off my back to some of the young people and they don't appreciate it and it breaks my heart so with that with a broken heart because you're helping people they don't appreciate it with a culture where it's all take 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 and you meet very few people that want to be your friend plus your mum passing away and then patron causing problems um just got on top of me yesterday and um, I just need to go slowly and, and take things easy and not but there's a part of me I want to be busy I want to do things you know I want to be out and about I want to be excuse me but I can feel I can feel at the back of my neck my nerves have snapped I can feel it and I think any stress will just Send me the old, send me over the edge. So I just need to like, just being honest with you, I just need to like. I, I just need to be uh, patient, and I, and I, and you know I'm not hyper charismatic or charismatic, but you know the Ghanaian people, they're a very jealous people, and. Uh, I think there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on. I think some people, you know, they mess with these fetish priests. And I think sometimes, I know you might think it's over the top, but I think sometimes, you know, some of these people who are jealous of us here, the Ghanaians, um, you know, they might be trying to send evil spirits to us. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but, you know, there's a, there is a spiritual warfare going on as well where um, there's a lot of idol worship here, a lot of satanic activity going on in these villages. And we're, we're, we're marching into the villages like the like uh, like soldiers in the last, uh, like the Battle of Adam going into these villages with Bibles and tracks and invading them. So there's going to be some comeback, isn't there? There's going to be some kind of spiritual attack. And, I, and we've, we've invaded villages, we've invaded the universities, we've invaded schools, we've invaded the old place with the gospel. So you're going to get some kickback, aren't you? So I think that's where it's at. And I just need to just... I just need to uh, take it easy day by day. You know, and uh, it's a big thing to, you know, with your mum passing away. So, so without further ado, this I think this will edify us. If anybody wants to come on, 
and enjoy this time together the live stream is there it's not for debate or argument it, it, we're going to go through Salah Adin, God bless you, bro. I, I, I assume you're a Muslim. God bless you. Uh, you're welcome to think of me. But th th this catechism, it's for Christians, so it's not for non Christians to be coming in on live stream. So here's uh, the Heidelberg Catechism, uh, the Confession of Faith. Uh, I've put a link. The Catechism or Instruction in the Christian Faith received its name for the place of its origin, Heidelberg, Germany, the capital of the electorate of the Palestine. That the Reformed faith might be taught and maintained in his domain, the godly elector Frederick XI commissioned Zacchaeus Us Ursinus, professor at Heidelberg University, and Caspar Olevin, as court preacher, to prepare a manual for instruction the youth in guiding pastors and teachers in the basic doctrines of the Christian faith. Prepared with the advice and cooperation of the entire theological faculty, heartily approved by the elector himself, and sanctioned by the Synod, gathering of prominent Reformed preachers and theologians, it was first published in Heidelberg with a preface dated January 19, 1563. Sorry, I just... Just give me a second, yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There's someone on the phone. So the great synod of Dort, sorry, someone was falling, I let my wife deal with it. <laughs> the great synod of Dort, 1618 to 1619, declared that the Heidelberg Catechism was in all respects in harmony with the word of God and it required office bearers to subscribe to it. So there we are. So that's a little bit about the Heidelberg Catechism. So now we're going to go through it. So, so here's the link. Here's the link. Yeah. I'm I'm live here, so don't come near. <laughs> I don't want my wife likes her privacy. She doesn't want to be on. Uh, So there's the confession there. You can get it there. All right, that's the link there. You can get it. Okay. Ah, yes, Sam. God bless you, bro. So the, there's a live link there if anybody wants to come on. As I read the, the catechism, we're just going to meditate. Ah, yes, Sam. If anybody wants to come on, you can come on live. We're just going to meditate on the Heidelberg Catechism. So if anybody wants to come on, that's the live link there. Okay, so I'm gonna continue. So day one, what is your only comfort? This is what I found encouragement today. I, I really was blessed by this. What is your only comfort in life and death? That I with the body and soul, both in life and death, I am not my own, but belong to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, who with his precious blood has fully satisfied for all my sins and redeemed me from all the power of the devil. And so preserve me that without the will of my Father in heaven, not a hair can fall from my head. Indeed, that all things must work together for my salvation, whereby the Holy Spirit he has assured me of eternal life and makes me heartily, willingly ready from now on to live unto him. Let's pray. Father, we just praise you and thank you for this day. And I just pray that as we meditate on this catechism, it will bless us and encourage us in Jesus' name. Amen. So the scriptures here, you know, uh, 
just read a couple of them. Uh, Romans 14. Romans 14, uh, 7 and 8. Romans 14, 7 and 8. For none of us live to himself, and to man die to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. It's a great comfort to know that we're the Lord's. It's a great comfort to know that, that we're not our own, that we're his in a universe that seems dark and empty, but actually is full of God. And that we know this God, that we are his, is an amazing thought. Romans 8, 28, that's uh, scripture number 9. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So I, I'm sure that you agree that it's an encouragement. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8 to 16. Oh, Ephesians chapter 1. 13 to 14. In whom are you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption, redemption of the purchased possession unto the prayers of his glory. So isn't it a comfort to know that we're gods we are god's children that we are in his arms that death cannot separate us from him that everything is working for our good that we have this grace that was saved in him what an encouragement what a comfort <clears throat> how many things are necessary for you to know that in this comfort you may live and die happily three things first the greatness of my sin and misery Second, how I am redeemed from all my sins and misery. And third, how I am to be thankful for God for such redemption. I think that's amazing. How can we find hope and peace in this world? We've got to acknowledge sin, the greatness of sin. You know, the wisdom is to know yourself, to know what you really like. And when you begin to look into the eyes of God, into the word of God, you begin to see who you are. You know, uh, Titus uh, chapter 3, verse 3 and 7, Titus uh, chapter 3, Titus chapter 3, uh, verse 3 and 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceiving, serving, diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after the kindness and love of God, our Savior towards appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You'll not find meaning and purpose in life. You'll not find meaning and purpose in life until you acknowledge who you really are. You know, Muslims say, oh, Allah forgives. But how do you know who you really are as a Muslim? How do you know as an atheist who you really are? Because unless you start to read scripture, the Bible, the Bible exposes you. The Bible shows you you're a sinner. And that as a sinner, that you have no hope in saving yourself. There is no hope by saving yourself. You can't save yourself. You're a sinner. And you need the forgiveness of Christ. You need what Christ has done and paid the debt. And the almighty God, almighty God, in all his greatness and power, came down in Jesus Christ and died on the cross for us. So that we could be redeemed. What an amazing salvation. And unless we have that salvation, we have no hope. But if we have that salvation, we have a comfort today in every trial. We have a comfort to know that God is with us. And we see all the scriptures there that's given in the catechism. So Lord's Day 2. From where do you know your misery? From the Lord of God. Mm. How do we know our misery? How do we know we are sinners? Turn to Romans 7 7. It's 
sorry. You turn to Romans 7, 7. Romans uh, 7, 7. How do you know that you are a sinner? Turn to Romans 7, 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. The Ten Commandments are important because the Ten Commandments expose our sin. Okay? The Ten Commandments expose our sin. Do not lie, do not steal, do not commit adultery. They expose us. What does the Lord of God require of us? Christ teaches us in Matthew 22, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. First and great commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Of these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. Let's not get sidetracked by all the many things that are happening in our life. So many things are happening in the world today and so many things in politics, culture, economics. But let's not get sidetracked from the main thing. We are to love God and our neighbor as ourselves. Uh, turn to uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 27. It's one of the scriptures there. Luke, Luke uh, chapter 10, verse 27. We read, And he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Our Lord said, This do, and thou shalt live. That is to love God and our neighbor. We can get sidetracked by so many things today. Uh, let's focus on loving God and loving our neighbor and not be sidetracked by anything else. Can you keep all this perfectly? No. For I am prone by nature to hate God and my neighbor. Ephesians 2.3. Turn to Ephesians 2.3. So we can't do this without God's forgiveness and without God's strength. We can't love God and our neighbor unless God helps us. Ephesians 2.3. Among whom also we had our conversations in time past and the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, were by nature children of wrath, even uh, even as others so the ten commandments are important they show us our sin but we're to love god and our neighbor but we can't do this in our own strength we're sinners you see so lord's day three so you I, i'm sure you agree the catechism the higher catechism is full of practical spiritual doctrine and wisdom it, it's very very helpful i find it helpful today uh, grieving today as I was for my mum I uh, found it helpful reading this because it was bringing me back to who God is and to the basics of the faith and just to be anchored in, in scripture again you know so this is gospel truth so I hope you're encouraged and your faith is nourished on scripture here uh, day, Lord's day three, did God create man thus wicked and perverse? No, but God created man good after his own image, that is, in righteousness and true holiness, that he might rightly know God, his creatorly heart, creator, heartily love him and live with him in eternal blessedness to praise and glorify him. So God made man, humans, Adam and Eve good, you know, he, he made, sorry about this. A bit of water on my Bible. God made human beings good. Adam and Eve was good. But they went and fell. But they originally were good, you know. So Genesis 1, 31. Genesis 1, uh, 31 and God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good the evening of the morning were the sixth day Genesis 1 20 uh, Genesis 
1 26 and 27 and god says let us make man in our image our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them so god made man adam and eve as good and he gave them work to do and then he says for we're in then does this depraved nature come from from the fall of disobedience of our first parents adam and eve in paradise where our nature became so corrupt that we were all conceived and born in sin so he says the whole chapter uh, genesis 3 so how did corruption came in it came in by adam and eve adam and eve fell into sin and it brought corruption so genesis chapter 3 we read now the serpent was more subtle i think it might be raining outside now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the lord god had made and he said unto the woman you god said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god has said you shall not eat of it neither shall you touch lest you die the serpent said unto the woman you shall not surely die for god know that in the day you eat thereof then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil and when the woman saw the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took off the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord god amongst the trees of the garden and the lord god called unto adam and said unto him where art thou and he said i heard thy voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself he said who told thee that thou wast naked hast thou eaten of the tree wherein i commanded thee that thou should not eat and the man said the woman whom thou gavest to be with me she gave me of the tree i did eat and the lord god said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done and the woman said the serpent beguiled me and i did eat and the lord god said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon the belly thou shalt go and the dust thou shalt eat all the days of thy life and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow that shall bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee thus adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice and unto adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which i commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat of it cursed is the ground um for thy sake in sorrow shalt thou eat of all the days of thy life thorns and also thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat herb of the field in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread till you return unto the ground for out of the waste thou taken the dust thou art and unto dust shall thou return and adam called his wife name eve because she was the mother of all living and unto adam also and to his wife did the lord god make coats of skin and clothe them the lord god said behold the man is become as one of us to know good and evil and now lest he put forth his hand to take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever therefore the lord god sent him forth from the garden of eden to till the ground from whence he was taken so he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of eden cherubims and flaming sword which turned everyone away every every way to keep the way of the tree of life so here so i like i said anyone wants to come on and give some devotional thoughts on 
the Heidelberg Catechism. You're welcome to come and uh, join in. So there we are. There's the link. Right link again. So the Catechism is saying that the fall came and man become corrupted. So Genesis chapter 1, 2 and 3 are important historical. If you get rid of Genesis 1, 2 and 3, if you allegize it or if you reason it away, you destroy the whole Christian faith because the Christian faith is based on man is a fallen, corrupt being and needs salvation. And that salvation cannot come from man because his mind, will, his mind, his will and his heart are in bondage to sin. And God has come in Jesus Christ to die for us and to bring us back, excuse me, into communion with God and salvation. And the fall is proven historically. You look at the history of mankind with all the murders, rapes, and all their wars. You can see man is corrupt and needs salvation, needs Jesus Christ. Man cannot save himself. We cannot save ourselves by religion. We need we need redemption because man's fall is massive. But we are so depraved, it says in the confession, that we are completely incapable. But are we so depraved that we are completely incapable of very good and prone to all evil? Yes, unless we are born again by the Spirit of God. So to do real good, we need to be born again. To, to really do the work of God, we have to be born again. Turn to Jeremiah 17, 9. Jeremiah uh, 17, 9. And it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Unless the Spirit of God comes in, unless the Spirit of God enters your life, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot live for God. Uh, John 3, 6. Turn to John 3, 6. We read in John chapter 3, verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. You need to be born of the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. If you want to worship God, God is spirit. So you must be of the Holy Spirit to worship in the spirit. And if you, you cannot do that in the flesh. Do you understand that? That you cannot worship God in the flesh. It's not possible. Flesh gives birth to flesh. God is not flesh. God is spirit. So how can you worship a spiritual being in the flesh? You can't. You need a spiritual you need a spiritual connection with God who is spirit. And so we need the Holy Spirit to help us to worship through Jesus to the Father. We need the Holy Spirit's help. We need to be born of the Holy Spirit, born of God, the Holy Spirit coming into our hearts so that we can worship God. Flesh gives birth to flesh, spirit gives birth to spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to worship God. It's not just religion. It's not going to church or mosque or, or whatever institution you go to and do and do the, the religious rites. It's of the heart. It's having a, a, a spiritual renewal with inside you of God's Spirit coming inside you, giving you new life, new hope, a, a, a salvation where you can have faith and trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation and so where you can worship freely in the spirit, it's not religion, okay? It's a relationship, okay? Sorry. It's not just a religion. It's a relationship. So therefore... Does not God then do injustice to man by requiring of him in his law which he cannot perform? No. For God so made man that he that he could perform it. But man through the instigation of the devil by willful disobedience deprived himself and all his descendants of those divine gifts. So Romans 5.12. You've got to remember that Adam is the head of the human race. So when he rebelled, he was our head. Romans 5.12. Wherein by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. 
so death passed unto all, for that all have sinned. Will God allow such disobedience and apostasy to go unpunished? Certainly not. What he is terribly displeased with are inborn as well as our actual sins, and will punish them in just judgment in time and eternity. As he declared, cursed is everyone who does not continue in the things that are written in the book of the law to do them. So turn to Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. Galatians chapter 3. I have to say that they, it's very gospel oriented this catechism. Galatians 3.10. Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse 10. For as many out of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continue not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. So God judges us for sinning. He curses those who will not repent and believe in him. You know. But is not God also merciful? God is indeed merciful, but he is likewise just. His justice therefore requires that sin which is committed against the most high majesty of God be punished with extreme, that is, with everlasting punishment, body and soul. Turn to Revelations 14.11. Revelations 14.11. Revelations 14.11 Revelations 14.11 uh, And the smoke of their torment extended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So we need to just stop a minute here and talk about this. But... Um, There is a hell. The Bible teaches there is a hell. And if we don't believe in Jesus Christ, we go to hell. That's what the Bible teaches. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. The Bible is the highest revelation. It is higher than my mind. It is higher than your mind. It is higher than all the great philosophers of all time. It is higher than any religious leader. And the Bible teaches that man... And women who do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will be in hell. That's what scripture says. And we have to believe all of scripture. We can't just take the bits we like and the bits we don't like. Scripture clearly teaches there's a hell. And we don't need any of this wokeism, this woke ideology or, or the alphabet crew coming in with their ideas about what is right, what is wrong. No, the Bible says what's right and wrong. The Bible teaches what's right and wrong because the Bible is the word of God. And the Bible teaches it there is a hell. There is a judgment. Now, there is a difference between Christianity and Islam here. In Islam, they say that Allah can just forgive because he's merciful. The problem with that is it, it, miss, it misses justice. God is a just God and he must be seen to be just. He must be seen to be just. He cannot just forgive. He must punish sin. But if he punished you for your sin, you'd be going to hell. So Christ Jesus came and took your judgment, your punishment. He took it upon himself for you. Okay. That is what the Bible teaches. Muslims might come and say, oh, it doesn't make sense, whatever. But that is what the Bible teaches. That without the sacrifice of Jesus, you cannot be saved. Now, it goes back to the time of Abraham when Abraham was told to sacrifice his son. And then God provided the ram, a sacrifice instead of Abraham's son. That was pointing to Christ, who was the final sacrifice. The Passover points to Christ. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So as Muslims, you see in the Old Testament, it points to Christ becoming a sacrifice. There had to be a sacrifice because mankind cannot save himself. And God cannot just forgive. He has to punish sin. He has to be seen to be righteous. If, he, if he's not righteous, his, his mercy means nothing. 
it's a it's an arbitrary thing that doesn't make sense i forgive one rapist but i don't forgive another rapist that doesn't make sense it just doesn't make sense but that god punishes sin and that he, in, instead of punishing you he took the punishment for you he's a, he can do that because he he created the laws he's the head of the laws and he is your mediator so he can die for you he can go to the cross for you and shed his blood for you and jesus christ did that the messiah did that for you and without that sacrifice you cannot be saved day five Since then, by the righteous judgment of God, we deserve temporal and eternal punishment. How may we escape this punishment and be again received into favor? God wills that his justice be satisfied. Therefore, we must make full satisfaction to that justice, either by ourselves or by others. Romans 8. Excuse me. Wrong, uh, Exodus 25. Sorry, that's the coke, the wind in me. Can we ourselves make this satisfaction? Certainly not. On the contrary, we daily increase our guilt. Uh, Matthew 6, 12. Can any m mere creature make satisfaction for us? None. For first, God will not punish any other creature for the sin which man committed. And further, no mere creature can sustain the burden of God's eternal wrath <coughs> against sin and redeem others from it. Hebrews chapter 2, 14, 18. What kind of mediator and redeemer then must we seek? One who is true and righteous man and yet more powerful than all creatures. That is the one who is also true God. <coughs> Excuse me. Isaiah 53, 11. So in other words, how can we find the salvation? It's not in ourselves. It's in Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying there. Isaiah 53, 11. Isaiah 53, 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. So here it's telling you about Jesus Christ, who he is. And then day six. Why must he be a true and righteous man? Because the justice of God requires that the same human nature, which is sin, should make satisfaction for sin. But one who is himself a sinner cannot satisfy for others. Why must he also be true God? That by the power of his God that he might bear in his manhood the burden of God's wrath. And so obtain for and restore to us righteous life. Uh, so Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Acts 20, 28, yeah? Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourself and unto the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseas to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. So God purchased with his own blood our, our salvation. And it goes into the who the mediator is. But who now is that mediator when one person is true God and also true and righteous man? Our Lord Jesus Christ who is freely given unto us for complete redemption and righteousness. Matthew 1.23, 1 Timothy 3.16. Turn to 1 Timothy uh, 316, 1 Timothy 316. 1 Timothy uh, 316. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So, as you go into this catechism, it goes into day 16, it goes up to 
day 25, day 46, and uh, day uh, 52, yeah? So it has 52 meditations. As you can see, it's all gospel. And it was written during the Reformation. And as you can see, it's very edifying. It's very, um, sorry about that. Uh, let's go back to that. As you can see, uh, it's very uh, edifying, very practical, very gospel orientated. It was written during the Reformation. And uh, yeah, it's a real blessing. And uh, I just thought I'd go through a little bit just to show you this is a, a scriptural resource that will encourage you in the faith. And you can meditate on it every day. I did it today. I just I was on day one for about an hour. And I just read the scripture and meditated on it. And there was a missionary in Nigeria who was teaching pastors this and, and the pastors were blessed by it. Uh, so yeah, have a look at it and you'll be encouraged. It's very refreshing and uh, biblical and uh, will encourage you. So yeah, so there we are. So I hope that's been a, an eye opener for you about the Heidelberg Catechism, a resource that you can go and read from the Reformation. Uh, you can read it daily, maybe in the evening when you go into bed, in the morning, when you're at work, at dinner time. Just read a chapter a day and uh, it'll bless you, it'll encourage you. I read a chapter today, I found it very soothing, very comforting. Um, you know, going through bereavement, it was a it was a comfort to me and encouragement to me today. So I offer that for you. And uh, at some point, we'll go through some some of the chapters of this book. Sometime, this is a a book on preaching, preaching how to preach biblically by John MacArthur and others. Uh, it's an excellent book. Uh, it's got some great writers in there on preaching, exegesis and expository preaching. Hey, there's Sam. Sam's here, so I'll, I'll let Sam come on. Oh, hi, Sam. How are you doing, bro? Not bad. How are you holding up? Oh, just, oh, just about, bro. Just about. <laughs> How you quiet day today? I imagine. <clears throat> Is there, has uh, you been involved in the mission work um the blakes i know you took a few days off just rightfully so we we've, we've done lots of work sam uh we've saturated winnebe university we we last four or five weeks we, we reached thousands with the gospel and i have a chap called ose in kumasi which is in like Accra. he's helping us and uh, the children's work my wife's helping at the moment she's she's got a class and but yeah but uh it's just tough as well uh people that we've helped don't appreciate that we've helped them so that's difficult so that's been hard um, to take you, you kind of get periods of that you have you get people come close to you you help them then they stab you in the back they don't appreciate it then a new crop of people come you help them they stab you in the back and it's a constant <laughs> thing and, and it's just because the culture they don't have anything so they think because you're a white person they think you've got money and they come and join you and then they stab you in the back when they get what they want it's bye bye so it's, it's something shame, that, shame that you have to just learn to live with really it's not just me um there's a pastor i know pastor samson he's a baptist minister here he's he's ghanaian uh, so it's even with the ghanaian pastors they, they, those who are true pastors that teach the Bible, even the Ghanaian pastors find the same experience with their own people. It's very difficult. 
I imagine they I imagine they do. Um have you been sort of searching for solace <laughs> um if you like over the last few days. <laughs> um it's a, I noticed um I noticed the bits you read out. I was watching a football game hence why I didn't come on. <laughs> but uh but uh in regards to I'd say comfort, I think knowing our place with God is quite important sometimes, mm. isn't it? It puts things into perspective. Um, I was personally unaware of uh, this catechism before you just showed it, but one I'm very familiar with uh, is the Westminster one, and I always like what the first the first question and answer is. It says, what is the chief and highest end of man? Man's chief and highest end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Oh. You know, and uh, it's important to understand, like, where we stand with God, really. Does that kind oh. of puts your life into better perspective, in my opinion. And and from that perspective, then, you can kind of work out sort of where your life's going. Uh, 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 uh. And But also where to find that said guidance. You referenced how finding comfort, you know, in the scripture, for example. And I think sometimes in our hardest times, that's kind of where your head should be buried the most. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, because uh, because you you will find that if you search it, search the Bible for an answer in hard times, you will find it. Might not find it straight away, but you will you will find it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. But uh, it's also important, I think, for people to to know sort of the great catechisms confessions and all these things because they they help they're a good guide they're a really good guide and they're mm. quite edifying actually especially the ones which came out uh reformation and post-reformation like uh I, I remember reading one of the dutch ones once uh dutch reform ones once i forgot what it was called now it was lent to me by a friend and um you know well, that sort of just came out shortly after the reformation that did yeah, what, what I found helpful today is I read um, the Heidelberg Catechism, Chapter 1, but what I did was there's a chap who was commentating on it. Uh, so he brought some scriptures, and then the Heidelberg Catechism brought scriptures. And what I did is I looked at the scriptures, and I just stared on the scripture for like 10 minutes on each scripture, and I just meditated on it. Uh, and some sometimes I read the whole chapter. Like uh, I read um, the chap was commentating on chapter one, and uh, it's, it's from the uh, it was a commentary on the Heidelberg Catechism by the Dutch Reformed Tract Society, and he mentioned uh, as he's commentating on chapter one, he mentioned uh, John chapter J John chapter eleven. And a couple of verses from there about Lazarus, and I just read the whole chapter and meditated on it. So, so I think uh, if you just go through the scriptures of what they refer, refer and just be quiet and meditate on it, I found it a help today because, like, when you're going through stress and and sometimes your mind, you can't think sometimes, and just to have something there that just prompts you and that you can it's like walking sticks just helps you to look up something I, I found it a help today when i couldn't really think much today you know i understand it's um i remember when i stayed remember when i i, I stayed in that monastery up in scotland and there was a sign on in my room which said only a little one which just said uh, only those who are quiet in heart can hear the voice of God and I looked at that and I saw that sign the moment I got there and I thought oh huh, interesting but by the end of that retreat I understood what that saying meant because because mm -hmm. uh, because um, in that kind of environment when you stay in a monastery like that you, you're stripped of all the stresses of life you know you don't have to worry about work people can't really ring you because the signal's not great <laughs> uh, you know things like <laughs> things things like this and 
you know, I'm not saying I had like like God speaking to me or anything mystical like that, but but it's almost like when you open up your Bible and things like this, you can kind of hear God speaking through it better because there's no distractions. Your mind is just relaxed. Your heart is relaxed. Like, and I think sometimes in normal life, it's really hard for us all to be like that, isn't it? It's really hard yeah. for us all to just to just be quiet and just to listen, you know, and so that i think i think I, i've tried to reapply that how that experience i had there to my normal life now like i try to set aside something like an hour where i just I switch off my phone and switch off everything else and j j just sit in silence and with uh say my bible and what have you and it's it's quite beneficial i find you know, I'm not saying like yeah. think, mystical things happen. I, I'm not saying that. It's just you can just hear God's word a bit better because you're yeah, not rushing yeah. through it and things like that. You know. Do Do you find that uh, like social media for me? Like, because um, I post on I post on um, Facebook, and if you go on Facebook uh, on your feeds, videos pop up and things pop up. Like someone falling over a dog biting you get all these things and like you can waste like just like half an hour you just sat there you're ready to have a coffee and then you, you want to get on with the day and you see something and then i don't know if you find that but social media can be quite a distraction i uh, i actually think social media can be quite destructive actually <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. in some in some ways um like we're all we're all you know we're all guilty of using it for for different reasons um but <laughs> it's like um i more use instagram instagram's more something i use rather than facebook but like so you can flick through what are known as reels they're like short videos yeah, yeah. and sometimes i can watch one and then you can think to yourself oh watch another one oh watch yeah, another yeah. one I, oh watch I, another I, one I, uh, and then uh, all of us reels. all of a sudden all of a sudden an hour's passed <laughs> and you're just like yeah, oh wow yeah, okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, know, and, the funny, uh... and, and the funny bit is, is uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Ben. Ben always sends me loads of Instagram reels, funny ones that you find. And I'm just like, why, why do you send me these things? <laughs> <laughs> and I have, I have a friend. He sends me. He'll be listening now. Uh, Gareth. He always sends me like video clips of. Muslims debating, Christians debating, and, and it'll be like 10, 10 clips and things. And uh, by the time you've looked through a few of them, it's like time's gone by. Yeah, yeah it's a distraction. Yeah. Social media. I think I think it can be a good tool. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not like against it by any means, but I think we're we're all guilty of using it a bit too much sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, like, but I thought I thought I'd also share share this with you, Jason, because uh, you know I know you're you're grieving at the moment, and I, I was reading um, I got a book of sermons of Spurgeon's. I've been reading it kind of on and off, you know, for a few months. You know, I'll pick it up for maybe a week or two, and then I'll put it down, that sort of thing. Um, but I read one to today, and it was just called uh, Sim it was called simple salvation and there was a little quote in it which just said which just said a natural yeah. heart rebels against the simplicity of the way of salvation and then yeah. it's sort of and then it goes on i think spurgeon's kind of speaking hypothetically where he just kind of goes am i to just simply accept what christ has already done am i to do nothing but to look to him who was nailed to the tree and find all my salvation in him yeah. He goes, well then, says my proud heart, I can't understand it. And he goes, no, it cannot understand it because it does not like it. Mm, but, this, mm. but, but this is how simple the way of salvation is. And when I read that, I just thought to myself, yeah, it is that simple, actually, in so many ways. Mm. I think there are too many people out there who try to complicate the gospel sometimes. Mm, mm, mm. But it really is as simple sometimes as you just put your faith in Jesus, put your faith in Christ, put your faith in God. Mm, mm, mm. And yeah, it, it's, 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 it's funny you should say that because today 
when I read this catechism and it says, and it was saying that first chapter, that we are his, that we are his, we're his possession. I, I've always known it, I've known it, but it, it really blew my mind to, to, to know that it, it's, it's what a comfort to know that we're not our own, that we're saved and we're, we're with the Lord from now until eternity. God, um, God, um, God truly loves us, and it's kind of something hard for I, us I, to I grasp. Just, I just really. say hello to the guys here, uh, Michelle and, and John McDermott. And sorry, Sam. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but like, say, a, quite a famous passage. Every everyone who's kind of ha at least half read the Bible knows this passage, and it's in Romans eight. And I think this is the best Paul's best description of God's love for us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Paul is emphasizing in his letter to the Romans how loving and faithful God always will be. God's not God's not like that sort of boyfriend or girlfriend kind of thing where they're interested in you one minute not interested in you the next <laughs> you know uh, if um, if God loves you God loves you and it's just that simple he's not going to change his mind on that amen amen I'm going to bring Gaz on I don't know if I know Gaz if it's Gareth or someone else or Hello, Gaz. Hello, Jason. Oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I know, Gaz. <laughs> How are you doing, Gaz? You okay? Yeah, I'm uh, good. You know, uh, uh, meet Sam, 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 Gaz, yeah? Hi, Gaz. Yeah, I've, uh, I don't really know Sam very well. I only know Ben. I so... remember he used to hang around with Ben. <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> yeah, how are you feeling, Jason? Uh, a little bit better today. I think I was cracking up yesterday. Uh, a lot of stressful things happening yesterday, but I'm okay today. I've just, I've just been reading my Bible and praying and taking it easy. And I was able to book a flight, so I'll, I'll be in UK uh, mid September now. Yeah, well, I came on just to see if you was gonna um, see your mum up, or are you gonna miss it? But but thanks Gaz for your support and rallying the troops and that I really appreciate it because Gaz has let a few people know and they've contacted me so thanks for that Gaz. Yeah, um, I, I didn't I didn't uh, give Naomi a ring and I wanted to leave him proud. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we're, we're just talking about the Heidelberg Catechism. I read. Five chapters, and we're just talking about God's. I've comfort. never actually heard it. That's probably why I called in as well because I've, I've never heard it before. So I thought I'd, I'd have a listen. Uh, and so, uh, same year, mate. Uh, Sam was just talking about the simplicity of the gospel, uh, and that's it, really. Nothing else to say, really. We've come nearly to the end of the stream, unless Sam's got something to say or you've got something to say, Gaz. Yeah. Um... What what's that catches them like? I've never really heard of it. It's just to... it's just a, a devotional uh it's 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 oriented around the gospel, but it was written by some reformers, um and it was just basically trying to comfort people in a time of persecution. Um so that's the main ethos of it, and it's a teaching aid to teach people the basics of the faith. Um and that's basically the thing. And, uh, you know, like the Westminster Confession, the 1689, and some of these other confessions, they, they gain some inspiration from the Heidelberg Catechism. Cause, uh, the, the, Augsburg, the Augsburg Confession's not quite worth looking at as well, actually. There's the, yeah, the, Lutheran, yeah. the Lutheran one. Yeah. What do you think about the uh, Catechism, Sam? What do you, you read from? What do you think of it? Uh, this one I've only just heard of, <laughs> I, uh, the, the, the Westminster one, uh, I'm very familiar with and, 
I guess the, the the Baptist one isn't really a isn't really a catechism, but you know, confession. I guess I'm very familiar with that one as well. What do you think of the Westminster one? <laughs> uh, it's very good. Yeah, like like to be fair, I would say I more hold to the Baptist one. Like, uh, you know, because the the only really real difference between a more significant one, anyway, is their statements on baptism. Really, that's that's the only place they really differ. And it's more the mode of baptism rather than what it does. So it's it, so yeah, I just say I hold to the Baptist one. But I don't, you know, it's, you I've got nothing got really... nothing against got nothing against the Westminster one, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've tried reading this a bit about uh, the Westminster Confession. It was not for me. I think Jason likes it well. It's more he calls it like a gem. What was that, sorry? I think Jason really likes it. It's sort of like a like a gem to him. I, I can't hear. So, sorry, guys, I'm I'm struggling to hear. I don't know if it's internet here. Yeah, I think I said to Sam that you really like uh, the Westminster Confession book. It's like something that's really important to you. Yeah, yeah, and this this is one of my favorite books. This one, and uh, the sure. These are two of my favorite books. Shaw's Confession. Reform Faith. It's an exposition of the oh, Westminster sure. Confession. Yeah. And then uh, this one. Is What's really that one, the 1689 Baptist Confession? What's that one like? Have you read all of that? It's very easy to read. It's very simple. But this book here, if you get a copy of it, he, Waldron uh, expounds it. And uh, it's very, very good. Very, very, very good. You can get the little, the little one as well, which has been sort of, it's got little yeah, notes yeah. in it by Peter Masters. It yeah, is Peter Masters, isn't it? The, the Metap guy. Yeah. yeah, I went down to Speaker's Corner with Mike uh, probably over a year ago, I think, and uh, we actually pulled up outside of Peter Masters' tabernacle, and he he took a picture. Really? Yeah. I, I've been. I haven't been to an actual service in there i've been to the bookshop though yeah that's that that's the one i got jace that's the one i got <laughs> did some of these books like expand on the Westminster confession um well say the to be honest if you've read the but this confession the baptist confession you've basically read the westminster one they're the so similar like they're, they're so the, they're so the similar because i didn't like the, the the numbers were in numerals <laughs> uh, I, can't read it. Uh, I got it a bit I, I'm, I'm not too keen on that either <laughs> I don't understand it often. Can you read books with Roman numerals in? I can't read no, them No, it's like I got this one oh, I can't Let's see It's in Roman numerals <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I just remember the chap what the chapters are called <laughs> Rather than anything else So so now we've got Gareth on, we, we can just talk a little bit, because Gareth, Gareth is like the, the uh, he's kind of like, he watches the Muslim apologists like I don't know what. So Gareth, what, what are the main issues coming out of the Islamic Dawa teams at the moment? Have you got any advice for us? Um, I don't know. I mean, it depends like who, who you seem to watch. I mean, I tend to talk a lot on like TikTok and um, Clubhouse. Uh, I'm, I'm quite diverse. Uh, Twitter, I'm on there as well. Uh, it depends who you engage you with, really. I mean, some of them are okay to talk to, and they have done Bible studies with a few of them one on one. Mm. Yeah, so I kind of like explain a lot. Um, I think it's mainly the Old Testament they don't like. Oh, Jay, I saw actually um, the other day, I saw you were on um, one of, what's his name, uh, Darren or Pamza's uh, streams. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you, you brought up the whole thing of Christ being crucified in the Quran. But I just love the yeah. part when, I love just love the part, he kept interrupting you and then you just kind of went quiet. You just kind of sat there like that. And then you just go, okay, is it my turn to talk now? He just goes, no. It just takes you off. I just thought, what? <laughs> Like, uh, how how arrogant is that? It like, doesn't even just let you respond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I was just well, to get going. I was going to get going. Like preaching more on the crucifixion. <laughs> What's that? Sorry, guys. I think Jason likes preaching more on the crucifixion. Oh yeah, but this 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 Muslim guy, um, uh, Hamza Maya, uh, or his actual name is Darren, believe it or not. And I'm not doxing him, by the way. He, you know, he 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 calls himself Darren from time to time. It's just he um he uh, just calls himself Hamza because you know they adopt an Islamic name, in it? You know, so his his Islamic Islamic name is Hamza, but his proper name is Darren. But, but he um. I just, I just love the fact that because he was kind of, sort of browbeating Jason in a, in a way. I'm not sure if that's quite the right way to put it, but he definitely, I think he was, wasn't he? And and and, and eventually Jason just kind of sits there, just waiting his turn, and just goes, "You've had your say. Can I have my say now?" And he just kind of arrogantly just goes, "No," and just takes Jason straight off the stream. And I just thought to myself, like, surely you 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 gotta let the guy like defend what he was saying shortly <laughs> yeah you like you, you didn't exactly refute him you made an argument just let him just let him like refute your argument though mm. <laughs> well i'll tell you a little secret i plan one day when i'm in uk i plan to go down to his shop i plan to go to his shop and take some camera people maybe guys will come with me and uh <laughs> And, I think uh, Mike might go with you. And ambush him at his shop. So that's on the cards. So if he's listening, I will be popping into his shop sometime. I think I think I think uh, I think it's I, I wouldn't Mike. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that, mate. I think he's the kind of guy who'd be like, get out of my shop and call the police <laughs> saying I th I think he would do that. <laughs> I wouldn't advise it. It's a funny idea, but I'm just saying I wouldn't advise I think it. Mike I, I think Mike would do it a good thing. I don't know if I would. <laughs> Oh, apparently, yeah, Jess. Um, I, I could say, I could say, guys, guys, I could go to shop and say, right, can I just have my say on the? <laughs> <laughs> I want my, I want, I want to say my point of view. Do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> you could just make that a vi You could just make that a viral meme then. <laughs> <laughs> um. But, you know, actually, in regards to sort of London-ish, I plan to go to Speaker's Corner on Sunday. But believe it or not, my target is not any Muslim, but it's Bob. Do you still go down, sir? My... Yeah, I do. I just I just kind of just more just chill, but I've got a target this, this week. It's Bob. Oh. I'm going yeah, to... Yeah, I'm not... I'm going to... Uh, 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 he's not been too great lately. But as big as... I, 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 um, I think I don't agree with a lot of things he, he does down there. I think... I think it's his evolution side that puts people off as well. I want to... I want to really press him on his comments about scripture. Like, I'm even going to approach JC and say, like, look, I want to debate Bob and I want you to film it as well. Like, like... um about his comments about scripture like he's got to he's got to at least be challenged on this stuff you make a meme out of me if you want that's fine but he need but he needs to be challenged on this stuff like yeah. he can't just keep getting a free pass every time he's down in speaker's corner this this has got to stop hey sam i've got a question about bob um i've heard a lot about his uh ecumenicalism uh, i think oh, jason's not been happy about it either what's going on with that so in a nutshell bob just basically has this fantasy idea because it is a fantasy that he can somehow get all christians to unite you know like as in catholics protestants and orthodox you can get them all to unite and all to accept each other as brothers and sisters in christ whereas that's just a fantasy that can't happen because there are things which both all camps believe which the others will not hold to and it might even see as blasphemous or heretical you know you, you you can't you can't as say as a protestant go to say a catholic mass and say receive their sacrament you know because you don't believe the same thing that they do they you don't believe in say the transubstantiation and all that kind of thing i know that lutherans kind of believe in consubstantiation they sort of believe the presence of christ is there but it's still not on the level of what or it's still not on the level of what the catholic church teaches is it so he, he some uh, it's like for example i've noticed when he argues for the trinity these days he kind of uses the essence energy distinction that the orthodox church uses 
you know and but then he kind of d- throws this blanket statement out and say that we christians believe this no we christians don't believe this the eastern orthodox believe this you know because protestants and catholics to be fair to catholics believe in divine simplicity not not in the en- energy essence distinction you know it's just it's just this i it's just this like, stupid idea of just he wants to please everyone i guess maybe is a good way to put it but that's impossible that's absolutely impossible so at the end of the day with the differences between all these camps someone's right someone's wrong i don't know do you, do you want to say something on that chase being as i've just had no, my little run no, sorry, keep going keep going i'll just <laughs> i was actually doing i was actually chatting with mike last night actually about um about people like you know Bob as Peter Corner, some things on the Muslims, uh, and what other people believe, and you know just like when you do evangelism in general, and um, so something actually came to my mind, you know, like you know when you're looking at like what the Protestants, Catholics, and Orthodox teach on like say the Trinity and you know some uh, Holy Spirit and the Father. Well, I think um, the Orthodox uh, Christians teach um, the Spirit comes from the Father, whereas the Protestants and the catholics um don't have that because i think the the catholics uh, and protestants don't teach what it says in john fifteen twenty six, whereas the spirit comes from the father whereas the protestants catholics don't believe that it comes from the son i i can i ask what's your sort of view on bob's sort of ecumenical stance just curious well i used to follow bob years ago but once i started finding to believe in evolution and he just sort of like selects who he wants to debate with and talks to and and then he, he thinks he can talk to atheists and he doesn't believe adam and eve were real people i kind of got put off by that and i think Kay started debating him and other people started debating him i thought what's the point of him being a bible believer well, he's not a bible believer <laughs> to be honest well, why does he talk to atheists if he's an evolution believer yeah, no, I agree with you there, but he's not a Bible believer, to be honest. It's like the other day he made a comment saying that uh, the Christian faith is not dependent upon the Bible, it's dependent upon the message of the church. Yeah, well, even when I was an atheist, I didn't believe in what Bob believes in not evolution. No, that's fair enough, I'm just saying. He, he... But if so you've got you, any do, comments do, on do, this, Do you Chris, agree, or... then, if... Bob is an evolutionist and he thinks the church didn't take uh, Genesis literal and um, he doesn't believe Adam and Eve are real people. Do you think he shouldn't even bother with the Bible at all and he should just be an atheist or something? I I certainly... I obviously don't want him to be an atheist, <clears throat> but it is. But certainly his position is contradictory. I'll certainly say that. And it, and it doesn't really hold any water. Because certainly once you believe Adam and Eve were not real people, the entire foundation of Christianity just falls. It just falls completely to the ground. Well, has anybody ever spoken to him about that? A few people have tried. I think Jason being one, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Tried to talk to him on uh, one occasion. uh, But... uh, I stopped trying because uh, he's just so strong-minded. He just, he it just was that book I gave you, Jason, talk. wasn't it? Do you remember that? Sorry? I gave you a book on evolution. Do you remember that? That was the one you actually... Yeah, uh, yeah, I used that book. That was the book I used on the video that Soko uploaded. I think Bob was angry with the, with him about that video. He was, he was actually really angry with him for that because he saw it as, like, causing division. And it's like, no... No, actually, because um, I saw a stream of his the other day. So I've been kind of watching a few of his things recently because I, I actually want to approach him. I don't want to go with my, my guns half loaded, if you get what I mean. So I need to kind of brush up on exactly what he what he thinks, what he believes. And like um, someone posted what looked like a genuine question about the difference of communion of the saints within uh protestantism and within say catholic slash eastern orthodoxy and the first words that came out of his mouth was oh i think we got someone trying to cause division here <laughs> and it's yeah. like what and it's like what how, how how one this question looks quite genuine for a start and but secondly 
Who cares? Who cares? It's this person's asking about the differences between, you know, the doctrine of the communion of the saints between these yeah. two denominations. Just answer it. <laughs> who cares if he's... And I don't think he was even trying to cause division. Yeah. He's just got this weird idea that, like, you know, challenging him on things like annihilationism, because Bob's an annihilationist, uh, or challenging him on things like uh, Adam and Eve, or even challenging him on things like scripture is causing division. <laughs> it's not. It's about yeah. standing for truth. That's what it's about. Yeah, there was a there's a, a couple of stories that illustrate like the importance of unity in different ways i'll just tell you three stories about about uh lloyd jones dr lloyd jones um there was a story that he went to canada and there's a guy called ct shields he was a reform guy and he was whacking everybody he was he was whacking he was like defending the faith, but everything that came out of his mouth was negative. And Lloyd Jones said, "You know, um, if you keep criticizing everybody like this, you know, it's going to do more harm than good. So just keep that in your mind. Just put that one." Then there was an example in the uh, Lloyd Jones was speaking about to the evangelicals in UK, and there was. Anglicans there and people from other denominations and he was basically calling them out of the denomination saying look if you keep your denomination keeps compromising the truth you're going to lose your evangelical doctrines like they're going to be undermined and John Stott after he finished preaching he stood up and it was like a gentle rebuke to Lloyd Jones he was saying no stay in your denominations in other words you know even though there are bishops that deny the virgin birth stay in your denominations and then the last story was at a banner two conference lord jones was saying evangelicals need to be united on the fundamentals and john murray a presbyterian he was saying no we need to be united on a confession on the westminster confession so this issue of evangelical unity what is it you know you can be hypercritical you can then say, on the one hand, you should all agree with us on a confession like the Westminster, but Lloyd Jones took a middle view. He was saying that so long as you hold to the fundamentals, you're my brother and, and sister in, in Christ. Amen. Whereas Bob, he doesn't even hold to the fundamentals. There are fundamentals that he denies, like a fundamental the, the, that the Bible is central to the faith that, that, uh, that creation uh is historical genesis 1 2 and 3 is historical that uh heaven uh, that hell is real he denies fundamentals so you know he can call he can talk about ecumenicism all he wants but it, it it's just a woolly woolly idea that doesn't have any content just it's some fantasy fantasy it doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> um but Actually, to add to your comments about Lloyd Jones, because he, I think he knocked the nail on the head personally. Like, for example, to use one good example, Calvinists and Arminians, you know, they should really join together in the same way the Wesley and the Whit the Wesleys and Whitfield did, you know. And but you do, I will admit, that you do get some. I will. I I think sometimes the the Calvinists or the Reformed are the most guilty of this. They tend to be the most kind of dogmatic i guess uh mm. like there's this new there's this new guy who's kind of come on the scene he's not a, he's not a debater or anything he's just kind of this do you know what i mean by like pop apologist just makes these short little videos kind of thing his name's jordan jordan riley he's an american and like um and like for example he made a video on billy graham being a false preacher now he actually brought up some good criticisms of of uh, Billy Graham, right? Uh, so some legitimately good criticisms, but one that he brought up where I was just like, "No, mate, you don't go there." Was he went, he went. Billy Graham was an Arminian, therefore he preached a false gospel. And I was just like, "Oh no, don't even go there, please." <laughs> like, um, like, who cares if he was an Arminian? Who cares? That should have nothing to do with your rebuke of him. <laughs> you know. I mean, well, well, 
Well, when, when you look at Spurgeon, you know, Spurgeon, he would uh, send money to Hudson Taylor. You know, Hudson Taylor, the missionary. Yeah. He also, uh, Hudson Taylor was not like Reformed Baptist. Uh, he, 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 they would send money to George Muller. George Muller was definitely not Reformed. He was, um, he was uh, brethren. <laughs> and they sent money, the, the tabernacle sent money to him. So, you know, the, and also Charles Hodge, if you think of Charles Hodge, he was, he was actually very gracious with Christians that weren't Reformed, but they were Christian. They held to the fundamentals. So there are, there are, uh, you know, even like Richard Baxter, the Banner True published Richard Baxter books, but Richard Baxter is not a full reformed Calvinist. Uh, he did, he was not five points. He, he, he believed, he believed in a kind of middle road on election. Was he like uh, a four point or a three point kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I've always been committed to the reformed faith. But I've always tried to show love and unity with those who hold to fundamental beliefs, um, the fundamentals. So, you know, like here in Africa, uh, there are pastors that, you know, to find reformed people here is very difficult. Uh, but there are evangelicals, there are people saved, they do hold to the fundamentals. And we have give them Bibles, we give them books, we give them food churches pastors here but you couldn't say they're reformed but yet they are they're of the kingdom of god and we've helped them where we can amen but i think also at the same time it's important to hold to your principles i think i do think that personally that the church is impoverished because uh she doesn't respect like we've looked at the heidelberg catechism you know the these creeds there's a richness there and the church has impoverished itself with this postmodernism, this cultural evangelicalism and it and and it's and it despises its history it despises you know we we, we don't want to go back to dead orthodoxy but there's a lack of interest in in the riches of of the church of what the there church is. has there is the actually past. There is actually a lot of Christians these days don't even they're not really aware of things like the Nicene Constantinople Creed or the Athanasian Creed or the Chalcedon definition, these yeah. sorts of things. They're not even aware that these things exist, <laughs> you know, like um, and, you know, it, it, you can't we can't ignore our history. Definitely not because it, it's also yeah. a good guy. It's a good guide and it's a good teacher. Like, um, like, and actually, to once again borrow, I guess, uh, what's his name, uh, Lloyd Jones. Uh, I see you did a good interview once with uh, Tyron Davis, who was quite a famous Welsh uh, broadcaster and presenter. <coughs> and um, he was asked, like Lloyd Jones was asked, you know, where where do you get your teaching from? And uh, Lloyd Jones just simply replied with, you know, I'm a traditional old Protestant. My my uh, source of authority is the bible itself and he said well you're going to ask me well that's your interpretation and he replies yes but one is guided in this by what has been taught through the centuries and one must be humble to look at what uh, all the great people of my of my faith have taught and passed down yeah. you know like so we we and we kind of have to do that don't we we we, we can't ignore our history and too many yeah, christians yeah. are becoming ignorant of their history now yeah, and I think I think that uh, so much emphasis on experience and expediency, like pragmatism, like does it work? So let get the flashing lights. Experience, am I experiencing it? There's not enough emphasis on truth, and so you don't see people even in the West seeking truth. And if they were seeking truth, they would have a, a bigger hunger for the word. And they would go back to, they would read John Calvin. They would read the Puritans. They would read Spurgeon. They would read the catechisms, the, the, the confessions. If they had a love for truth, because they're just, these things are just oozing with the Bible. Spurgeon loved the Bible. Calvin loved the Bible. 
the confessions they, they love the bible it's not to say they're perfect they're not perfect but there's a richness there that's all and uh the church is not feeding on that richness as it should do it's it's not i i liked your i like your point about experience i think too many people think that when you're say a christian that you kind of experience god all the time you know mm. god can actually feel very far away sometimes you know like yeah. um it really can and then other times you can feel really close like um uh actually i just i just want to read something here it's actually a hymn that an old baptist mm. minister wrote and uh he emphasized this hymn was kind of based around the idea that god can feel very close but god can feel very far away as well it says this but in my joy i caught a strain of sadness to give me pause when thinking of my way for on the shore i saw he left me lonely when i had the most the need of him to stay when i was tried he left me worn and wondering when he left me alone when i was fighting fears he let me tread the steep, steepest slopes in solitude before he came back to my side to dry my tears like and people seem to think that when you're sort of walking with god you're going to experience god all the time but you're not it's not like that like i imagine with what you're going through jason god could have felt a little bit distant for maybe a day yeah. maybe two but that's normal that's normal you know yeah. but it sounds yeah. like today for example you feel like god's drawn close to you again yeah and yeah yesterday yesterday it felt it felt far away but today close so like you said yeah it's feelings uh they can go up and down but what what i've always found in my life over like i'm 53 i forget how old i am sometimes but i'm 53 but in my life <laughs> what i've always found really really helpful to me i would never ever become a christian me no chance right because all my life when i was a boy i never trusted anybody i didn't i, I didn't trust anybody and I, I was the most i was skeptical i was skeptical of the skeptical i didn't believe in anything and so there's no way in a million years i'm going to believe something unless it's true it has to be true sounds like my past and, came uh, you know like uh, like kieran and others and mike and that we were all skeptical of something as well yeah yeah so so um when i was about uh i think about 18 i was doing an open university degree because i got kicked out of school whenever i had any qualification so I, I started to do this open university degree and i remember reading bertram russell's history of western philosophy I've read and that. john stuart mill and things like that and I always thought there has to be a meaning to life. I don't know what it is, but I, I couldn't find it anywhere. And uh, I'll just bring Mike on. Hello, Mike. Hi, Jay. You okay? How you Can doing, you hear Mike? Me, right? okay. Yeah, you okay? Oh, for a minute. I think you're a bit oh, too it... close to Mike. Is it our yeah, Mike? Well, are you okay? I'll, I'll call you come on for a few minutes because we're Kim, you see. We're going to go to bed too, but I'll just pop on. Sorry, I'll just oh, pop on. All right, Mike. Hey, it's good to hear you, bro. You as well, bro. I'm sorry to hear about your mum, Jay. It's okay, mate. It's okay. It's okay. It's good to hear you, bro. And God bless you with your marriage and everything, bro. Oh, thank you. Kim, you can say hi if you want. Oh, hello. Hi. This is Kim Jason. Hi, Kim. Are you okay? Hi. God bless you both. Yeah, yeah. We've met. We have met before, yeah. 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 Just likewise, I'm sorry to hear about you for your loss. Um, but yeah, it's good to see you still doing the good God's work. Thank you so, like much. you said, preaching the gospel. Thank you very much. And God bless you to both of you, yeah? Thank you. Thanks, Jason. All right. God bless you guys. You too. God bless. <laughs> oh, that's so, sweet. I was I was just saying that I, I couldn't, uh, I wouldn't believe in anything. And what convinced me was uh, when I was reading about Jesus in in the uh, in the gospels I couldn't get my head around him I thought who is this person who's saying there's heaven and hell but then I was reading Spurgeon and Lloyd Jones and I thought these guys I don't understand what they're saying but I know it's true 
I knew it was true. And um, I, I became a Christian because Christianity is true. I knew I was a sinner. I knew Jesus was the saviour. And so when I, when, I, when I met the Banner Truth books, the Puritans, uh, John Bunyan, these Puritans, they were preaching the truth. They were preaching the word of God. And I just wanted the truth. Don't give me the happy clappy stuff. I want the truth. I want to know what the truth is. Even if you the know. truth hurts. <laughs> and and I've always come back to that. That has always, I've gone through many trials and many tragedies, many brokenness. And, and through knowing the truth, I've experienced God. Providentially, I've seen him answer prayer and I've experienced God. I'm not demising experience. It's important to experience God. But what has kept me going is truth, who God is, what he's done for us. And without that truth, I would not be standing here today. And uh, so if you're born again, if you love the Lord, you want truth. You will want to know the truth. It talks about, Peter talks about uh, you were born again by incorruptible seed by the word of God. So if, you're, if you are born again, you want the word, you want to feed on the word, you want to grow in the word. And as you grow in the word, you experience God, you know. So that, that's my experience is that. I've gone through many tragedies, many pains. I'm going through one now. And what, what, what keeps me going is the truth. I know it's the truth. I know Islam's not the truth. I am, will not become a Muslim in a million years. I will not become an atheist in a million years. It's never going to happen because I know what the truth is. Well said, Jay. Well I'll said. never surrender. <laughs> you need first to be an atheist, Jay. Hey? Well said, Jay, mate. Well said. <laughs> you still need faith to be an atheist. Like Dr. Frank Turek said, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. But, I mean, experience is important. Knowing God, you know, today I felt peace and uh, God fills us with his love. And we have, you know, it's not, a, it's not, faith is not a dead faith. It's alive, isn't it? God is a living God. He answers prayer. He does, he does, he does amazing things. I, I think, um, you know, when we're talking about experiences, I was born into a Christian family, so I grew up around it. Um, but there hits a point in one's life where I didn't become an atheist or nothing. I just kind of just went away from it. Do you know what I mean? 16 years old, party lifestyle. You can read between the lines. <laughs> you know, that sort of, that sort of thing. Um, but I remember when I was about 20 years old, I'm a keen fisherman. And I, went, and I was out fishing with my older brother. And I just kind of looked around me and just thought to myself, there's no chance this world was created by accident or by chance. This, there's no way that happened. <laughs> so um, I started searching, I guess. But do you know the one thing that finally convinced me was basically the Bible, but was also C.S. Lewis, because I was kind of reading Mere Christianity alongside my Bi uh, Bible that I had had since I was like 10. Do you know what I mean? Like... Um, and it was this quote here. I'm trying here to prevent anyone from saying the really foolish thing that people often try to say about him, him being Jesus. I am ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I do not accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who is merely a man cannot say the sort of things Jesus said. Would not a great moral teacher, he would either be a lunatic on the level of a man who says he is a poached egg, or he would be the devil of hell himself. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something even worse. You can shut him up for a fool and you can spit at him and kill him as a demon, or you can even fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come to with any patronizing nonsense about him being a great human teacher he has not left that open for us and he never intended to well, and i remember yeah. and i remember le reading that alongside my bible and i just kind of went this is all true isn't it <laughs> <laughs> and that was it wow. and that was it that was it <laughs> that was it, it that, that was the moment kind of thing <laughs> hey, man. what 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 about you mike when did you believe 
2012 I've been a Christian for since then. Wow, wow. You've been a, been a bad believer as long as I have. Yeah. But prior to that, I was seeking and I looked at other things. I even went to a bunsling gathering just to, because I got asked to go. And I, it was the worst day of my life. And then a week later, I went to the church and I experienced God. And it's like, this is what I'm looking for. This is wow. it. And I've not looked back. <laughs> wow. That's amazing, bro. Amen. Amen. Mm. What about you, guys? Hey, Michael. We we went out yesterday with Kieran, didn't we? We were spoken. We spoken to a few people. Yeah, a few Muslim. Um, some old guy that wanted a Bible, wanted a church, and just generally quite a few people. Yeah, we had some good conversations with some people. Kieran, yeah, we, got... yeah, we spoken to an Indian guy from that Korean cult, didn't we? Oh yeah, the Korean guy who believed that Mother Earth. That God is the mother and God is the father and all that kind of stuff. That sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, the Indian guy I've spoken to, and we I carried on the conversation while Mike and Kieran was talking to others, and uh, this guy said um, he came from a Hindu family, but he didn't believe in it. Then he tried a Roman Catholic church for a while, and then sort of disappeared from faith for a bit, and then he ended up somewhere in this Korean cult, and then he said um, he believes uh, the, the Bible... Revealed that he is um, he's in the right church and God got married to this woman and so on, and then there's prophets and all this kind of all the kind of stuff. Yeah, and we're debating the Sabbath as well. He kept saying that you need the Sabbath to to get salvation, and he never once mentioned the cross. He just said, "Oh, just believe in the Sabbath, keep the feast wow. of tabernacles, and all that kind of stuff, and you'll be fine." And it's like works salvation. It's like salvation plus works that he was adding, you know. I was guilty of that once, when, to be fair, when I was part of the Catholic Church, so I think we, we all make mistakes. <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. That's uh, it's just reading, the, getting to know the Bible, isn't it, and then realising where you've gone wrong a bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually a big believer now that when you, if you actually open up the Bible and truly read it sincerely, you will not, you will, well, you will either not become a Catholic or if you were like me and became one, you will leave it. <laughs> either which one. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's just the pure word of God, isn't it? And anything that teaches otherwise, you have to just like stand against it and just stick up for the truth, think, isn't it? Well, Jason knows the... that well, don't you, Jay? <laughs> yeah. Stand up for the truth, lad. <laughs> well, th well, think of all the square pegs in round holes you have to fit with Catholic theology into the Bible, man. That's it, yeah. That's it, yeah. The uh, well, we spoke. Sorry, go on, Jay. Well, so, well, mate, no, speak, bro. You, you, me, and yours, Kieran, bro. Uh, me and Kieran, me and Kieran spoke to this Muslim guy as well, and he kept quoting this passage in the Bible where it says, "No one." He says, "Why do you call me good? The only one that is good is God." And he was arguing, saying that Jesus can't be God because he said the only one that is good is God. And I said, well, keep reading the passage, because at the end of it, Jesus says, come and follow me. And then I explained to him that the reason Jesus said only God is good is because we're Trinitarians. And that Jesus was Jesus and the Father have always existed in glory before the world began. So Jesus and the Father are one. And that just matches up with Trinity um, belief, basically. And I quoted Hebrews to him where it says, where the son says to the father, you, you know, you're, you, you've you got a scepter of righteousness. God, your God, is, speak, is speaking. And God the father is calling Jesus God, basically. And I was showing him these scriptures and he was like, he wasn't having it, but I showed it him anyway, just to try and link the dots up for him so he could understand a bit more. Oh, oh, oh. So it's just that kind of conversation that was having with him. Oh, wow, that's and then good, he, that. And he kept saying as well, Jason, that, you know, the Jonah scripture where it says, Jesus said, I won't give a sign unless it's the sign of Jonah. Yeah. And they kept saying that because Jesus was three days in the earth and Jonah was three days in the whale, that Jesus never died. He said, that's the context of that scripture. And I said, no, it's not. I said, it's a parallel. It's just showing you a comparison about Jesus' resurrection. So it, we had kind of them two conversations going on. I'm sure you've covered it though before, Jason. I know you've answered it many times. I think in 
in covering that subject. Wow, well, wow. Well. He's done it enough times. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, it's good to hear you, Mike. I haven't heard you for ages. It's like I've lost my long lost brother. <laughs> I'm still here, bro. Just <laughs> been uh, otherwise engaged. <laughs> <laughs> Married life. That's it, that's it, yeah. Uh, we'll have to. Sorry, go I like on. The I like the term of words you used there. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise engaged. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> um, yeah, I'll be I'll be in God willing UK round, round about. I can't give the date here because we have enemies yeah. that you know like. You know, yeah. Know but mid round about mid, I'll tell Gareth and he, he can pro pass it on to you. Yeah, mid, sure. Mid no September, you know. Yeah, we're thinking of going speakers corner again, Jay, me, Gareth, and Kieran, and. Wow, come along. Wow. You're more than welcome when, to come along. When when you're going, do you any ideas? Thinking of beginning of September time. Okay, okay. So, if, you, if you do a, an extra trip at the end of September, I can come with you as well if you do another one. Yeah, sure. No problem, yeah. Can I join the band? <laughs> of course yeah, you can, yeah. Come along. Come along. Come along. The more the merrier. Hey, I've got a question for you. Um, have you heard anything from Ben? Because I've asked people and nobody seems to know anything about about, about where he is. Uh, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, he's just not interested in apologetics anymore. Is he not really? I mean, I, I actually miss him. To be honest, I enjoy, I actually enjoy listening to him. Um, he still talk. A, he still speak to me. Friends with him. He's he's basically my best mate. To be honest. Oh, is there? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, just is just, he still uh, Catholic? Yeah, yeah, just, just, oh. um, just more kind of. He's just focusing on his family and his stuff like that, you know. Did you, did you lose his dad? What's that? Are you that you lost his his dad? No, 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 no. I didn't lose his dad. It, it, his dad did. He, if you like, nearly did. I, I don't want to give any personal information of his. Yeah, away, no, he's, he's, a very, he's, a, he's a very, he's a very private, he's a very private boy. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, um, yeah, he's a very private boy. I guess uh, he did have an incident which happened with his dad, and I think that just changed his perspective on things a little bit, you know. And he um, he just spends more time with his family and stuff, you know. But I'm well, not willing to give away. I'm not. I'm not willing to give away any of his detail, any of his personal information, because I know he killed me for that. <laughs> well, well, you're bizarre, right? Telling people missing. Oh yeah, uh, he kind of knows that people miss him. Believe it or not, he gets messages on Twitter and stuff saying, "Where in the where in the world have you gone?" <laughs> he, he does honestly, um, but he's he's the kind of boy where he'll always do what's right by him. If you know what I mean. Well, he, he, I miss him. Tell him I miss him too. I will. Um, Jay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna go to bed now because I'm with Kim. But I'll uh, I'll speak to you very. I'll speak to you very shortly, lad. You know, we'll have a catch All up. All right. All right, Mike. God bless you. Love to Kim as well. Yeah, great. Yeah, God bless. God, right, God, God bless you, Sam. Um, God bless you. Good to hear from you. God bless. Bye, bye. What kind, of, what kind of a question is that, by the way? Someone's put in your chat, is football a devil's game? <laughs> is what? Is football a devil's game? <laughs> <laughs> it's football a sucker, is it? <laughs> I don't know. Talk, Sam, you answer it, mate, or Gareth will be. <laughs> no. Oh, if it is, if it is demonic, then I'm guilty of that sin. I'm, I'm a quite a hardcore football fan. I'm not a hooligan, by the way, but but I'm quite a hardcore <laughs> football fan. Like, I, I support Stoke City, and I try, I try when the football season's on. I try and go and see him as often as I can. <laughs> so. Hey Jason, um, at, the, at the beginning when I came on, you was asking me about the Muslims. Well, I've been I've been doing lots of bad with them at the moment. You know, I've been like teaching them a few things about the Bible, and I think yeah. um, teaching like what Scripture actually says as well, and helping them with topics and difficult questions as well. So, and some of them said they've actually answered pretty much a lot of them. Yeah. I've got here, Gareth. You've given me these, haven't you? Did you give me this one? Uh, I don't. I didn't, I didn't give you that one, no. Did you give me this one. Uh, yeah, that was a spare one I had. Yeah, that was one because uh, Mike got one, one as well. Not that one. Not, not the one on the right. That's yours. That one. 
Because I, I had a few spare ones, so I'll give you one. Into, might give you one. Still on my desk. Have you got that blue one still? I think it's at Naomi's. I don't think it's here. I've given you quite a few books, haven't I? I'll give you those um, Craig Evans books as well. Oh, them Craig Evans books are brilliant. Very good. Yeah, the one about Jesus the Manuscripts. I like that one because it goes into all the Gnostic Gospels as well. I think I think there's a couple of pages where it talks about Isa and the Quran as well. Yeah, you've given me some good books. It's here. Have you read that as well, uh, Sam? Uh, what book is that, sorry? Have you read Craig Evans' uh, books about um, Jesus and manuscripts and the ancient texts? I'm going to be honest, I don't even know the author's name. <laughs> like, he's, he's, he's that, a that first time, he's a, that's the first yeah, time I've heard the name. It's re really good to recommend that one, Sam. If you get all of that, it's really, really good. Well, I one, I would rec one I would recommend on manuscripts is actually... I forget who the other guy that's in it, but it's James White and someone else, and it's 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 basically the um, the 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 minutes of a debate that he had with another person about the manuscripts of uh, the Bible. But but I'll um it's in my it's in my uh, the other room with all my other books. So when I know when I know what it's called, I'll tell Jason what it's called, <laughs> and then he can recommend it to someone. <laughs> that, that that book, uh, uh, Sam, it requires um some really focus, and uh, when you're reading it, there's quite a lot of detail and there's some good references as well. No, I, I'm quite good. I'm getting good with heavier books now. Like I mean, heavier yeah, yeah, in the sense well. of like uh, like. Uh, my current reading is Herman Babink kind of thing, reformed dogmatics. So, which isn't actually that hard to read in some ways, but you know, I've read a lot of books as well, and some of them I like, some I don't like. Um, I think uh, I still think uh, my favorite sermon is by Jonathan Edwards, uh, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Actually, now in reference to Ben. Ben has always said that is the best sermon anyone ever preached. He's always yeah, I, 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 I haven't, I haven't, that. I haven't read that sermon. I haven't read I that sermon at all. Once but given he, that he, sermon he, to a Muslim keep... Muslim to listen to, and she said she got a bit quite terrified. It's a, uh, it's, I think I know Jason knows this. Ben once upon a time was a Protestant, and he was, and his favourite, believe it or not, was Jonathan Edwards. Um, and. Uh, he he's always recommended me that sermon i've never gotten around to buying it or getting it or whatever but he keeps telling me i need to <laughs> yeah i've always thought about getting some really small copies of that that sermon and giving them to people you know so um when they're actually looking at for god or i want something convicting i want to give people somebody something convicting they can read that and they might change their opinions yeah i would but obviously I haven't read it, but I've been recommended it so many times. Uh, <laughs> I love it. You know. You know, I think it's brilliant. I, I, wish, I, I want somebody to read that in church for one of these um, very liberal churches. I'll do somebody to read that. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> what do you think, there, Do you think somebody should yeah, read that? Know. I'm looking for it. Yeah, I'm looking for it now. Uh, it... You found it on the Christian Sermons, Jay, in audio. I, I actually gave <laughs> it to it's on monologues, isn't it? Ago. It? But it's on YouTube as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is a, a audio <laughs> thing. So you can get it on Monogism. I'll put the link here. It's really good. Uh, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. Mm -hmm. There, that's the link. I think we should all read it now that it's been mentioned. <laughs> I've been uh, honestly. Uh, ben has actually been harassing me to read it for ages. <laughs> How many times have you read it, it uh, Sam? What's that? Sorry. How many times have you read that? Has he read it? Did you say? Yeah. How many times have you, have you read it or listened to it in audio? I, I read times? it years ago. I know. I I haven't read that sermon once yet. He just keeps recommending it to me, and I've just never got around to it. Like um, he uh, so every once in a while he just goes. Have you have you read uh, have you read Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God yet? And I'm like, no, I haven't got around to it yet. He just keeps going. You you, you should. <laughs> he just keeps telling me to to get around to it. <laughs> uh, Solomon, no, I've not read the uh, Robert 
breaker i've just googled him he seems to be a king james only guy no i haven't sorry guys i'm gonna go in a minute so sam have you got your last words you want to share or gas i got a last prayer if you like um yeah, yeah i'm i'm out um, i might have a look at those um sources uh, from that uh, catechism and see what it's about and you know just see what, what you've been teaching really because i've never heard of it so it's called all new to me really yeah i think uh there is uh i'll just get this before uh i go Give me a second, guys. One second. <laughs> Sorry, can not resist? So here, uh, I'll just show you, folks, uh, before we uh, fight close. Uh, I'll just share the screen. This is a monogism. You can get a commentary on uh, the Heidelberg Catechism as well by Dr. Zachariah Ursina. So that gives you information there about who he is and what he is. But that's a commentary on the Heidelberg Catechism as well, if you can get hold of that from Monogism. So Sam, if you want to close in prayer, Gaz, do you want to say anything? Well, um, just let just let me know when you're on next. I might jump on, um, depending on the topic. But um, you know, I, I might be out tomorrow as well with with uh, Kieran and uh, probably uh, third okay. on Thursday, hopefully as well. So just let just let me know when you're when you're over here as well, Jay. Okay, I'll probably do uh, something tomorrow on prayer and preaching, the importance of prayer and preaching tomorrow. Is the preaching going in in in, uh, in Africa at the moment? Is it going okay? Has, has anybody been in touch um, from anywhere else? Yeah, there's people in touch. There's lots of people in touch. Because I went out with my, with my mum and dad. Um, I think it was like to um, like, a, like a Christian gathering, and um, it was some people who was working like uh, in like Uganda as well. Some some people from over here, you know, like mm. in in like locally as well, and from churches. And I think they was doing some mission in Africa in Uganda. And I gave them your um, your website and your youtube and and asked them if there's interest in contacting i don't know if they've been cut in touch at all all right i'll check the website then maybe they put an email there but thanks for that gareth all right it's getting late here guys so i don't know what it's over there what time is it over there uh 12 o'clock pretty much 12 four minutes so too. Sam, if, you close, if you close in prayer then bro and then we'll call it a night and i'm gonna want to come I'm... on the stream tomorrow we're doing prayer and preaching it uh, depends what time I get home from work, but sure. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to read a prayer for once, but this is one I've always had in my back pocket because I think it's beautiful. Okay. Um, it's actually one of Thomas Aquinas, but it's a beautiful prayer in all fairness to him. Anyways. Dear Lord, gra grant, O most merciful God, that I might admirably desire, carefully examine, truly know and perfectly fulfill all those things which are pleasing to you, to the praise of your glory and to your holy name alone. Direct my life, O God, and grant that I might know what you have me to do and to fill what is most necessary and profitable for you. Grant to me, O Lord, my God, that I may not be found wanting in prosperity or in adversity, and I might not be lifted up by one and I might not be cast down by the other. May I find joy in nothing but what leads me to you, and sorrow in nothing that leads me away from you. May I seek to please no one, or fear to displease anyone, save only you. Grant to me, O Lord my God, a vigilant heart, that no subtle speculation may lead me from you. A noble heart, that no unworthy affection may draw me from you. An upright heart that no evil purpose may turn me from you. Give me a steadfast heart, that no tribulation may shatter, and a free heart, that no violent affection may claim it as its own. And finally, grant me, O Lord my God, most merciful God, a mind to know you, diligent to seek you, and wisdom to find you. 
Give me a way of life pleasing to you, to persevere and trust in you, and await in your confidence, and I shall embrace you to the last. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful prayer. Yeah. I thought of you, Jason. <laughs> that, was, that one was for you, man. <laughs> yeah, it really was a help. We really touched with our brother. We really did. Thank you very much, Sam. Guys, great to talk to you, bro. Uh, give you a bell on WhatsApp some time thanks for all what you share bro and uh sam thank you and uh kim and michael for coming on john mcdermott uh, solomon michelle everybody who's come to listen thank you for that ben if you ever listening we love you we miss you we hope you are okay and uh, uh bob uh there's a guy here he's willing to debate you if you're listening on uh, the centrality of the importance of scripture. So if you're a speaker's corner, you see Sam, Bob, don't run away. Please There's don't. Here. Please don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go. God bless you, folks. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everybody. Great to hear God from you, Sam. Yeah, Take great care. to hear from you too, guys. God bless everyone. Take care. Have a good night, everyone. God bless everyone.